guys, AC Car Shark back again. With Pixel Sandwich. We're on episode 32 of the Shark and Pixel Show. Today we're hitting up our top 10 games of 2010. The year is finally coming to a close, and we had one hell of a year in, in, in the video game industry this year. I don't think anybody anticipated this year to go as well as it did. We had so many good games. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, it's hard to even pick like a top 10, honestly. It's it's really tough, but... Uh, this, is, this is one of the hardest times i've had picking a top 10 in yeah. recent memory yeah and uh pretty much we're going we're, we're going based on how much we were entertained by a game um more so than how like good the game was so we may have some picks in some weird order especially me um we, we may have some some picks in some weird spots that may not make some sense but it's mainly because we enjoyed it that much and it's it's mainly from from our point of view obviously so well, let's be honest. I mean, that's the whole point with people making their own lists, you know, because yeah. everyone's list is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, so. and everyone's got their own opinion. So obviously, you know, it may not be the same as everyone else's, but it's what we think. So uh, let's kick it off, though, because we have 10 games to hit. So um, number 10, what do you what do you have going? My first one is a downloadable game, actually, and uh, it's Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, that game just um, hit everything right for me. It had... The beat 'em up stylings of River City Ransom. It had one of the best soundtracks in recent memory from Anamanaguchi, and I listen to it all the time. I just keep going back and back to that game, and it's it's one of my favorite games of the year. It's it's actually kind of funny because I, I never even thought to include downloadable titles in this. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I totally I totally didn't even consider that. Um, I don't know if anything would would beat out the games I have, but I didn't. Even... I'm not breaking the rules, am I? No, no, it's just top okay. ten overall. But um, <laughs> sure. yeah, number number ten for me was Just Cause Two. Uh, nice. I'm surprised it's on there at all for you. Yeah, I mean, I I I enjoyed it. Um, obviously not enough to crack you know anything higher than a 10 for me but um you know it was for the game itself it was it was really innovative and uh the grappling hook was definitely for the win um and uh you know i i did have some fun i i did lose track of that game for a long time i haven't played it in a long time and i, I need to get back to it but uh i never beat it or anything but i did i did enjoy the time i did put into it so i uh i figured it was worthy of, of, of at least a number 10 spot there totally yeah, yeah but uh number nine all right, number nine is Just Cause 2 for me. Sweet. <laughs> I, I actually put a lot of time into this yeah, game. Yeah, you, you did. And um, it, it, I really liked the first one. I was one of the few people that, that really liked the first one. I thought that it did some nice things, but it had a lot of problems. And the second fixed all the problems I had with the first and added, you know, one of, one of the coolest forms of transportation in games, which is that grappling hook. I mean, in every game that I played this year, I kept looking for the... I get, like, my mind kept wanting to search for the grappling hook button. Yeah. <laughs> because it was just such an easy way to get around the world. Yeah. And uh, I just loved what they did with that game. Yeah, it was, it was definitely good. And I, I actually did like Just Cause 1 as well. Um, I thought that was a... Yeah. It was actually a really good game. But yeah. uh, it did have its issues, which you're right. It did They did fix them in this one, so... Um, but yeah, no, de definitely worthy of a top ten spot this year. Um, uh, number nine for me was 3D Dot Game Heroes. Oh my God, I'm surprised it's even charted for you. Yeah, um, I I love I you know it's it's hard as anything. Um, it pisses me off because it's so hard, but I I for some reason still enjoy playing it. Um, I I love the art style. I love the way it feels. I love how it feels like just like a brand new version of Zelda from the NES. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just I just enjoyed myself while I played it. I mean, I only got to maybe like the third cave or dungeon or whatever they're called, but um, and there's like seven of them. So I'm like not even halfway through the game even to this point. But um, I I did really thoroughly enjoy myself while I was playing it for the time I did put into it. So uh, again, that's that's why it's down on the bottom of my list. But um, I just thought it was a, re a refreshing change as to like uh, compared to what was coming out for this year. You know, it was like a, just a different pace and a different type of game. Totally was, yeah. yeah. That one didn't even break break my my top ten, unfortunately. Wow, that surprises me actually. No. But, uh, number eight. Uh, number eight for me is uh, Vanquish. It's a uh, third person shooter. Uh, kind of feels like uh, Gears of War, but you have a button that controls these rocket boots, <laughs> so you can slide all over the battlefield and take cover. And there's um, there's a really cool weapon upgrade system. And uh, the bosses are crazy, and it's short, so you can just get in there and have your fun and play it over and over again to get a good score. And it's by Platinum Games, the same uh, company that did Bayonetta. So they just kind of, like, take every genre and, uh, you know, amp it up and do all kinds of cool things with it. 
And I, I thought they did a great job with Vanquish. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dying to play that game. Actually, I've had it on my GameFly uh, GameCube for like a month now, and they, you know, they're, they're pulling their normal tricks where they're not sending you the game that you actually want. So, uh, yeah, you gotta try it. yeah, I definitely want to try that one out. I did, I did play the demo, but uh, it's definitely one I need to get my hands on. But uh, number eight for me was Bioshock Two. Huh. Yeah, it's that's a little bit low. Um, for, for me, but um, Bioshock 2 I didn't enjoy as much as Bioshock 1 um, I felt like 1 was, was a far superior game, so I kind of was let down a little bit um, not not that not to say that I didn't like the game, obviously I did if it's on my top 10 of the year um, but it just was it was sort of a let down, I didn't like the whole like you had to like little, let the little sister like harvest and you had to defend her like 800 times, like I know you like you actually like that part of the game, I, I, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't stand it, I, I just felt it was way overused and just annoying um like, you didn't have to do it though no i know but i of course i was going after the achievement which you know, <laughs> yeah which of course i never got but um uh but yeah i mean bioshock i mean to me bioshock will never do anything wrong it'll always be like a top 10 game for me no matter how many they put out um because i love that series so far but um like i said i just feel like it was almost like Bioshock 1.5, like it really wasn't a true like sequel kind of. Um, yeah, I agree. With and that. yeah, I was a little bit, I was a little bit let down by it, so that's kind of why it fell to the bottom. But uh, yeah, so that's that's basically yeah. I mean, not not putting the game down, just uh, you know, just you know, no. I like I like the other games more. That's all. But uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, number seven. Um, number seven for me is uh, Mass Effect Two. Um, the first Mass Effect came out, and it was. For me, it was a little bit underwhelming. I remember I rented it from Gamefly and beat it really, really quickly. And it had a really, really cumbersome menu system. And the RPG elements were really weird. And the shooting didn't feel good. And for the second one, BioWare um, uh, pretty much streamlined it. And they took out a lot of the, the messy RPG junk. And they fixed the shooting. So it did feel really, really good. Um, the story kind of sucks, and it kind of surprised me because people always talk about how good the story is in Mass Effect. Yeah. I mean, really, you're just kind of getting the band back together and, you know, trying to get all your all your people together just to fight the last boss. And I don't know. I don't view that as a very compelling story. I mean, they they do flesh out all the characters, and they feel very realistic, but I don't think the story is all that great. So I wouldn't put it higher than 7, but I did have a lot of fun with that, too. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, after playing Mass Effect 1, I kind of wasn't really motivated to try number 2. I know that 2 is supposed yeah, to be, like... Yeah, it's hard. It's supposed to be, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be like, far superior and stuff, but, uh, I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump it's on like it. Just, it's, like, so hard to play 1 and then, like, go to 2, because, yeah, 1 is... I don't know, 1's not great. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to so. jump on it at some point, but you know, I'm just not really motivated to, to really, you know, go out of my way, but... Yeah. Um, number seven for me was Tropico Three, okay. um, and you know we've already done, done reviews. I don't need to go really into depth on this one. It's just you know it's a SimCity meets uh, the new millennium basically. You know it's it's just you know the nice 3D environments and uh, it's a nice change of pace game which I'm always looking for uh, to get away from the action and the shooters and the the RPGs and you know just the stuff that you play all the time. Um, mm -hmm. But you know we we have a review of that on our channel. So if you guys want to hear more more of my opinion on that, you can just go check that out. So we can save some time here. But um, number six. Uh, number six for me was a total surprise and a total shock, and one that I was not even anticipating this year. And it's uh, Enslaved: uh, Journey to the West. Yeah, it's a great game. It's by, yeah, it's by uh, Ninja Theory, the same people that did um, Heavenly Sword. And, uh, I mean, I've, I've never played a game with such great char character development. I mean, it's just, you really, really feel close to the characters by the end of it. I really liked the gameplay. It, it, was, pretty, it was pretty easy. It was hard to fall off of ledges and stuff, and it was kind of, like, automated. But that kind of helped me, I think, um, keep going. You know, I, didn't, I, I knew that I was just going to, you know, press A and forward and see, see the beautiful world that the developers made and just enjoy the, 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 the gorgeous world that they made and kind of lose myself in the story. And the ending is probably one of my favorite video game endings of all time. I still think about it to this day, and I think about, you know, what it means and uh, different outcomes that, that, like, could have come from it. And I was just not expecting that at all, and uh, I think it's deserving of the number six spot. Yeah, it's a, it's a great game, and unfortunately it didn't make my list. Um... Yeah. And I, I probably should have maybe thrown that in there somehow or some way, but um, I agree. The ending is is was is and was epic. Um, if you guys want to know what we're, what we're talking about, go out and and buy or rent Enslaved and give this game a shot because it didn't really get a lot of hype. And, Please buy it. Yeah. It's 
it's already thirty nine ninety nine. It's already gone down in price. So which means it's not selling. It. Yeah. So yeah, support it. Yeah, it's a, it, it is a great game. Um, number six for me was Alan Wake. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a little bit lower than I expected to have it, but um, yeah, I mean, again, we we we've reviewed this and given our opinions on this game. It just was a, a refreshing. Uh, it was a surprise game for me actually because I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was. Um, I, I knew the idea behind it was awesome and I was looking forward to playing it, but I didn't think they were going to execute it as well as they did. And, uh, it's one of those games that has a really good soundtrack to it, um, that I, I feel it kind of fit the mood of the game and stuff. So, um, it was one of those games that's easily, that you can easily get, um, engulfed in a story and then the music just kind of su- even just supports it further to like push you into that story. Um, mm-hmm. it was just, it was just like an experience for me rather than just sitting and playing a game. It felt like I was like in the experience rather than just you know, sitting in my chair, you know? It was um, definitely a lot better than, than you and I were both thinking oh, it was going to be. Yeah, abso- absolutely. I mean, that, that game is, is, is definitely, uh, definitely top 10. I mean, it almost cracked my top five.